With the goal of longevity, a major premise of the channel is to optimize biomarkers of as many organ systems as possible. Resting heart rate and heart rate variability provide info about the heart, but also the nervous system and adrenal gland, and that's what we can see here. So the resting heart rate and heart rate variability are cardiac specific measures, but their levels are affected by the balance between sympathetic nerves and parasympathetic nerves, and more specifically the vagus nerve. But also resting heart rate and heart rate variability are affected by sympathetic nerve activation of the adrenal gland, which secretes norepinephrine and epinephrine, which also affects resting heart rate and heart rate variability. In this video, we'll cover what's optimal for resting heart rate and heart rate variability, and more specifically, how do these metrics, RHR and HRV, change during aging? And also, I now have close to 1,900 days of data, so what's my, what's my data for resting heart rate and heart rate variability? So first, let's start off with how does the resting heart rate change during aging? And that's what we'll see here. So on the y-axis, we've got the average resting heart rate in beats per minute, and on the X, we've got age. And note that the age range is from 20 to about 50 years. And these data are generated by WHOOP. That's what I've worn since 2018. I'm not here to say who's the best, but that's just what I've worn. And there, with look, when looking at data for females in red and males in blue, we can see that the resting heart rate increases for both men and women up to 50 years. Well, what about older than 50 years old? Some insight for that comes from the data for women. And we can see that there starts to, there's, there's the beginning of a decline for, from 45 to 50 for the women. So is that true? Does the resting heart rate decline after 50 years old? So for that, we'll have to go to Fitbit data, which is shown here. Note that the paper will be in the video's description. On the y-axis, we've got the average resting heart rate plotted against age, but now we've, we've got the age range from 20 to 85 years old. And in agreement with the WHOOP data, we can see that there is indeed an age-related increase for the resting heart rate up until about 50 years old, after which resting heart rate declines. So note that relatively low resting heart rates are found in both young and old, which raises the question, is a relatively low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging? That's where heart rate variability comes in as that provides more context. So first, how does heart rate variability change during aging? And that's what we'll see here. So on the y-axis, we've got the RMSSD. That's the root mean squared of successive differences. That's the HRV metric that WHOOP calculates. And on the x-axis, we've got age from 20 to 60 years old. And then note that there are two different lines, so solid and dashed. The solid lines are data for HRV at 6 in the morning, and the dashed are for HRV at 6 at night. Regardless of which of those are used, we can see that HRV declines during aging. Now we can return to our initial question of, is a relatively low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging when considering the age-related decline for heart rate variability? So in youth, we'd expect to see a relatively low resting heart rate and a relatively high heart rate variability. So at younger ages, a low resting heart rate at a, and a high heart rate variability is what we'd expect to see. At older ages, we could see a low resting heart rate, but a low heart rate variability is also what would be expected. And if you're interested in older than 60, heart rate variability continues to decline. I covered that in an earlier video, and I'll put it in the right corner for those who missed it. So at advanced age, we'd expect to see a low resting heart rate, or we could see a low resting heart rate, but also a low heart rate variability. Now, my, I'm almost 51. I'll be 51 in a few months. So based on my current chronological age, the expected based on this plot would be 35 milliseconds. So with that in mind, is my first nine months, Q1 to, to Q3 of 2023 data for heart rate variability and resting heart rate, is that improved year over year versus 2022 and even where I from where I started in 2018, as the goal is to resist age-related changes for as long as possible. So first, we'll take a look at the average yearly resting heart rate, and these data start from August of 2018 through the end of September, so the, that's the end of Q3 2023. And as I mentioned, I have almost 1,900 days of data, which is what we can see here. So when I first started tracking in 2018, my average resting heart rate was 50.9 beats per minute, and then over the next few years, I've been able to sequentially reduce it. And if you're interested in those changes, I covered them in earlier videos. I'll also put some of those in the right corner. So what about 2023 data? Thus far through the first nine months, we can see that my average resting heart rate is 43.3 beats per minute. Now, rather than looking at yearly averages, we can compare these data using a two sample t-test. And when I do that and compare it with 2022 versus 2023, we can see that I've significantly reduced a resting heart rate in 2023 as that p-value is less than 0.05. Now in 
Similarly, when compared with 2018 data versus 20, 2023, that too is a significant reduction, 43.3 beats per minute versus 50.9. But remember, is a low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging? So for that, we'll go back to the plot. And the good news is that I've avoided the age-related increase as that's what's expected up until about 50 years. But when considering that the resting heart rate declines after 50, am I just simply experiencing an age-related resting heart rate decline? So for more context, let's have a look at HRV over this same time period. And that's what we can see here. So when I first started tracking HRV, it was 47.3 milliseconds. And note that I've been active my whole life. This isn't I wasn't exercising and then I started exercising. That was my data based on an active lifestyle starting in 2018. And then with the most, for the most part, with the exception of 2021, I've been able to improve HRV each year. And if you missed some of that story, I'll link to those videos in the right corner. Thus far in 2023, my average heart rate variability is 65.4 milliseconds. And when using a two sample t-test versus 2022, we can see that that's significantly better year over year. And it's significantly improved when compared with where I started in 2018. So we can see I've significantly increased HRV year over year and when compared with 2018, which is when I started. And just to highlight, that's a 38% increase for heart rate variability since 2018. So this idea that heart rate variability is an individual metric and that it's hard to improve it, it's just not true, at least in my case. So now we can return that to that initial question of is a relatively low resting heart rate indicative of youth or aging? And in my case, a relatively high heart rate variability combined with the low resting heart rate of 43 beats per minute on average in 2023 would be relatively youthful. That's in comparison to what's expected based on my chronological age, which is a lower heart rate variability and a higher resting heart rate, 35 for heart, heart rate variability and 57 for the resting heart rate respectively. So what's contributing to improvements for resting heart rate and heart rate variability in 2023? And I'll cover that in the next video coming on Sunday. So stay tuned for that. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, including daily data for resting heart rate, heart rate variability, and a whole bunch of other stuff, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, epigenetic and telomere testing, or microbiome composition, green tea, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, and note that they include ApoB, so it's a different panel than the at-home metabolomics, Die tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me a Coffee. We also have merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.